Hey there, welcome everybody. Thank you for tuning in and joining us for this very special Pet Sittingology Live Hangout. My name is Josh Carey and you and I and everybody on board today, we are in for a real big treat. Joining me is really one of my newest, dare I say, idols. Somebody who I have grown close to in the prior months and you know her, you love her, it's Arden Moore, and let me give you a quick background on her. You know she is the pet health and safety coach, she is a pet behavior consultant, she is an author of countless books. When I was doing some of my research, I innocently went over to Amazon and typed Arden Moore into the search box, and dare I say, I got pages of books. So to say she's an author is an understatement. She's written books like the Cat Behavior Answer Book, Happy Cat, Happy You, Fit Cat, Fit Dog, and so many others with 4.5 plus star ratings. You'll love it. Um, she's also the host of a an extremely successful podcast on Pet Life Radio called Oh Behave. This is a jam-packed show. You guys are in for an amazing treat, a lot of information, a lot of dialogue, a lot of fun and surprises. Help me welcome our special guest. It's the one, it's the only, it's Arden Moore. Hey, what's up everybody? Whoops, there goes the cat. Pet safety cat goes, hey guys. I'm breaking up my afternoon mat nap to be here, and this is our newest pet safety dog. This is the one, the only Kona, hailing from the Rancho Coastal Humane Society, and we are just delighted to be here, and uh, let's get this party started. Let's do it. Absolute pleasure. And like I said, it's Arden and friends. So you're going to be showing us some actual pet safety tips and tricks and techniques using the real cats and dogs. Speaking of using the real cats and dogs, I mentioned earlier, you are a, uh, a master instructor, pet first aid um, uh, coach, and you have your own um, program called Pet First Aid for You. Give us a little background and overview of what that is. Sure, and uh, basically, um, I am a master instructor, as Josh has meant. I've studied with different programs, and about a year ago, I created Pet First Aid for You. It is veterinary endorsed. We have Dr. Marty Becker on our advisory board. We have ER vets on our advisory board. We have internists. All these people that have all the EI, EI, EI after their names are backing our <laughs> curriculum. Uh, and the other thing, which is very important, is we use a real dog and a real cat. You want to check a capillary refill? Kona says it's right here. Everything looking wow. good. If you want to do uh, some work on a cat from whiskers to tail, the country's only pet first aid safety cat, Casey, rocking the house, is, is there to help you. And the most important thing for all of you listeners is this. We customize our pet first aid program. You are very important in the pet industry. So we have a program if you're a pet sitter. We went to Mississippi and trained canine police officers in a customized course. If you're into water safety, we have a lot of people doing water therapy and aquatics. We teach that. We teach dog walkers. We have even self-proclaimed crazy cat ladies who are taking a cat-only pet first aid class. We realize that your time is precious, but when you train your staff in pet first aid, they get certified. Your customers get that, that sigh of relief that they know that their most precious asset, their pet, is in good hands because you know what to do and what not to do in a pet emergency. So we go all around the country. We do in-service training as well as the public. But I've done a lot. As you say, Josh, I wear a lot of collars in the pet world. I'm the most That's passionate for sure. about helping people keep their dog and cat safe. That's wonderful. And speaking of pet first aid for you, that's the number four in the letter U.com. Um, I know, Arden, that you said uh, aside from our audience and pet parents across the country able to uh, book you in their area for a class, um, I know the other day we were talking about how 
pet sitters and dog walkers and trainers and other pet care professionals can actually work with you to bring you to their town. Right. So in essence, a pet sitter can help uh, uh, work with you to organize uh, with you so they can bring uh, their community to the table and get started, right? And it's petfirstaidforyou.com slash schedule to get that ball rolling. Is there anything else we want to- uh, Yeah, I want to do a shout out to Cynthia Tabot. She's in Mobile, Alabama. She brought me here and we did a two-day class with all different pet sitters, not only from her company, but others. She invited rivals. Isn't that classy? and all critters, pet uh, sitters, and uh, she knew how to do the program very well, so I do a shout out to her. But it's a great opportunity to get your name known in your community, and uh, we can help out a charity in that area, and you would be the host. So we're, we're trying to make it a win, 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 win. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um do consider that um, getting uh, on board with Arden as the host of this class, bringing in your community, your colleagues, your competitors, if you will, what have you, and uh, go from there. So uh, let's get right to it. Uh, before we go any further, I do want to say that this whole show is being sponsored by our fifth annual Pet Care Professionals Conference taking place this October 23rd through the 26th. 2016 in beautiful Las Vegas on the strip at the Monte Carlo Resort and Casino. Best ticketing is available right now at PetSittingLive.com. And there is a special going on. If you register for our conference today, within the next 24 hours of this live broadcast, we have a lot of special gifts for you that you will be in the running for. In addition to that, by the time this session ends, do head on over to our Facebook fan page, facebook.com slash petsittingology, because we will have PDF downloads from Arden based on everything we are detailing here and then some. So on our website, on facebook.com slash petsittingology, which is our Facebook fan page, you will see a bunch of links detailing everything we're talking about, including PDF downloads from Arden, and you'll be in the running if you register for our PetSittingLive.com event within the next 24 hours. So go over there when this ends, do like and comment on that specific show post and you will be in the running. You can keep dialogue going, et cetera. Um, you're also, Arden, you're also going to be giving away two copies of your book, Fit Cat and Fit Dog, that is two autographed copies. Tell us about those books, please. Yeah, these are my 25th and 26th pet books. I have very strong typing fingers. Um, but basically, um, they're about the needs and wants of your 21st century dog and cat. So we have a lot of sections in here. And with a salute to the Kate Benjamins and the Jackson Galaxies of the world, we have a whole section on feline enrichment for your indoor cat. We have a section on pet first aid for both of them. I love it that we are having a whole section on senior dogs. But we actually, I love this one picture. Uh, I love this publisher. What we did was we also teach you how healthy is your dog. So we go from the head to the body. And we go and let you know what's, what is normal and what is not. Who wants to have a huge vet bill? Not me. And who wants to have their pets be nicknamed Methuselah because they live so long? Me. So that's what these two books are about. We're trying to make the 21st century dog and cat to have a quality life. And it's got health tips in it. We even have a whole section on cat training. Let's see if Casey will do this. Hey, Case, let's touch it up, bud. Come on, touch it up. There you go, buddy. You just saw it live on the Google Hangout. We got the nice. one, the only Casey. All right. Love it. Um, let's see. Um, Kona looked cute. Really cute. Okay. Kona said, I did that. All right. <laughs> Excellent. So let's get right into a little demonstration because they are there. Talk to us about some creative pet first aid uh, tips that we can use on the go. What would you like to begin with? Yeah, I'm going to go with Casey the cat first. I'm going to let Miss uh, Kona come over here. Mm -hmm. He's going to the green room. Okay. All right, folks, we know that when cats get injured, they have five weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> they also have a very flexible spine. 
So if you have a choice between confronting a 10 pound upset cat or a 50 pound dog, take the dog. But if you have to wrangle a cat, never scruff. Scruffing a cat, watch the tail. Scruffing the cat, they get a little tense and touchy, right? So you need to use a bath towel. A bath towel should be in everybody's pet first aid kit. It should be in your car. You can use it to help assist an injured dog or a cat. So let me show you what I mean. You put, you practice with your cat when they're in a good mood. And to be able to administer aid to a cat, the first thing you do is you make them into a meatloaf. You put a towel here. Can you put the uh, camera down yeah. just a bit? We, yeah, yeah, just uh, let's see a little more, uh, yeah. There you go. All right, can you see that better? Yeah, beauty. Okay, Casey says, all right, I'm patient. You take the corner, you come under the chin, you come back again and you pocket in those front claws, grabbing this right here, tuck it in those back claws, and Casey says, welcome, I am a Pareto. He's purring. <laughs> Why? Like He's a purring? burrito, I got that. He's purring because he knows He's downloaded this so many times, he knows I'm there to take care of him. You can do the same thing with a little dog. When you're out and about, and if one of your dogs gets injured, I call it being a mutt giver. What do you do when you don't have a pet first aid kit? Come here, Kona. All right. Can you see over here? You yes, indeed. Actually, yes, indeed. You can wrap your dog. Come here. Let's go. Okay. And like one of your, um, you can wrap your dog in your um, your sweatshirt. You can use the drawstrings. Mm. And we all have leashes. When a dog is injured. Here, sit, sit down. Sit down, buddy. When a dog is injured, you never go face to face to a dog. But you can use your nylon leash, make a noose, practice with him. First one goes over the muzzle like this. I'm going to fix this. There we go. The second one goes underneath, and you make a loop. And then you can tie it in the back of the neck. Always tie it in a bow, not a knot. Now, I can render aid to Kona. Kona can still breathe. She can still give kisses, but she can't open her lower jaw. That's key. That prevents you from being bit. If she happened to cut her paw, I hope we wear clothes when we walk our dogs. That's always important. I say take your sock. And if you're far away and you don't have any gauze bandages, wrap the paw in the sock and then take your shoelace or you ladies that actually have longer hair than me and dudes, you can use your scrunchie and you tie it in a bow. And now paws up, says Kona. We have given a cushion to help stop the bleeding until we can get home and apply pressure. Wow. So, and the other thing is we all have water bottles. Do you know that the water bottle can act like a splint on a, on, a, on a dog's leg and you can use your shoelaces to keep the dog's leg in place? If your dog is overheated, the reason you can, way you can tell is that their gums are bright red, but this one's bubblegum pink. And they're panting, <laughs> right? <laughs> so if you don't have something like a nice water bowl for your dog, you can use a doggy bag, pour the water in the bag, and put each paw in the water because they cool through their paw pads. Or use your baseball hat, pour some in the, in the, in the middle, inside of the hat, and boom. You're dropping that body core temperature, which is really important. So those are just a couple of the MacGyver ideas for you, Josh, and all you listeners and viewers. Absolutely wonderful. What is um, 
Uh, uh, Christina asks a really good question. She wrote, first of all, she says, thanks for being online with us. What would you say is the most common mistake pet care providers make in pet first aid? I think that's a really great oh, question. Yeah. There's two mistakes. It's a tie. Um, and thank you for that question. That's great. The first mistake we make is that we baby talk the pet. It's okay, Coda. You've got a bloody paw. You're going to be okay. You know what that dog's downloading? I'm putting on my behaviorist hat now. Holy moly. The person supposed to help me is now acting like a little girl crying and pain. So we have to take a breath in and exhale. And we have to be, as my cat Casey says, we have to be in the me now. They need us. They need us to be calm. They need us to be confident. They need us to speak in a very controlled, I'm in charge kind of voice. Because if you freak out, they freak out. And it's going to be harder to render aid. Afterwards, I tell everybody else, you get permission to freak out later. When everything is done, go home, have a glass of wine, take a bubble bath. But in the pet emergency, you need to be in the now. The second common mistake people make deals with burns. If a dog got, you were in the kitchen and you spilled, your dog tripped you and you spilled hot water from pasta making on your dog. Hmm. Second degree, the dog will be going, ow, 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 really in pain. Third degree, they won't have any pain signs. Wow. So people think that it's not as serious as it really is, but what has happened is that the nerve endings have been singed and deadened. That is a critical 911 situation. That is a dog ready to go into shock. So don't think if you spill water, hot water on your dog, and they're not showing a lot of uh, Pain reactions, signs. but you see the big wound and you smell the flesh, that's because it's more serious than second degree. It is actually third degree, and this dog will probably go into shock very quickly. So mm. that was from Eliza, Eliza Massafinero. She's on Cornell's. Um, she is an ER and critical care veterinarian who has reviewed my curriculum. She taught me that. I thought that was a great tip. That really is. And speaking of burns and whatnot, I want to talk about uh, sunburn for yeah. dogs or cats. Two things. Um, how, how, how do you go out intentionally trying to prevent and protect sunburn? How do you recognize sunburn in a dog or a cat? And right. what is the best approach? Because I know ice cubes are, are a no, no, no Yeah. Think about our bodies for a second. If your body is really hot, overheated, and you try to counter with the opposite, which is ice cold, you've got a hot body and an ice cold spot. Your body is going to go into shock. That's, that doesn't matter if you're a person, a cat, or a dog. So you need to always counter with cool water, never ice. Secondly, a lot, I know a lot of you guys are out there walking dogs, and in the heat of the day, pay attention to your route. Because if you're walking on a sidewalk with a lot of ground cover in the middle of the day when it's hot, those bees and other insects are pollinating those flowers. Your dog that you're walking's nose is quite close to that ground cover, and they can step on a bee or get stung. So I encourage you to pick a route, either the time of day, a little bit cooler, or a route that's away from the, the hot pavement. And you know, guys, if a dog's paw can get burned, they're not wearing shoes. This is not a booty call, Kona says. Um, so make sure if you put your palm on that sidewalk and it's too hot for your palm, it is way too hot to walk that dog. Mm. Um, I bring a lot of water. I walk them in the shade. Um, I used to have a condo in Palm Springs and Chipper and Cleo, my other dogs, we'd literally take a five, 10 minute walk and come back in. You know, there's sometimes when mother nature is just too hot. The dog days of summer are not always sweet, right, Kona? Mm. Right. And Terry writes a very valid point here. She says another mistake she sees is not having a pet first aid kit to begin with. Can you show us your yes. pet first aid kit that you love, use, and recommend? Yeah, good question. In my car, in my house, I have the, um, this is made by Alcott Adventures, and this is a great kit. It's called the Explorer First Aid Kit. You know why I like it? It's very easy. It's portable. And it's for dogs, cats, and people. So oh, it's wow. a three in one. And, and then it looks inside robust. It, yeah. I can actually add my 
patented crew white sock and shoelaces and add some of my MacGyver tips. But what I like about it is that it's a reasonable price. It's got a lot of things you need. It's portable. And uh, you know what? You're ready and prepared. That's great. And um, I love uh, we have uh, a bunch of questions coming in. So please do keep those very valid, very relevant. Uh, Caroline wants to know, Carolyn wants to know, what do you put on a sensitive area like noses, for example, for sunscreen? Okay, very important. Um, they actually do make a sunblock for dogs and cats. The key word is read that label. Make sure it is called dog safe or cat safe. Their physiologies are so much different than humans, but don't be putting people's sunblock on a dog or cat's nose. Kona has a black nose, but she has white fur, and I can almost see her skin through this. So she would be one of the dogs that would be more susceptible to a sunburn. Um, dogs that have the, the bellies like this, they, would, they can actually get burned on their belly walking because the sun reflects off the sidewalk. Oh, wow. So just because Kona's walking at the beach or on a hot sidewalk, she can actually get burned from the heat radiating up. So wow. get dog safe sunblock. Now, uh, first of all, I love the Alcott pet first aid kit. Uh, I think we're going to link to that as well, because when you introduced me to that the other day, um, I went right to the site and I'm actually, uh, you had put me in touch with the creator of that kit. So uh, I'm looking for some way to bring that uh, yeah. more front and center to our industry, which is great. Well, you know what? People know me. I'm very picky about who I partner with. And I've looked at a lot of different pet first aid kits, and this one's the real deal. And, oh, Josh, I forgot. Can we share also that this is not only going on YouTube, but it's going to be an episode of the Old Behave Show. Oh, yes. I'm oh. so glad you brought that up. I was announcing that uh, during the uh, uh, pre-announcement uh, of this event, but absolutely right. So everybody on board during this live recorded show now, this is going to be an episode, as right. Arden said, of her Behave podcast, which resides on the uh, Pet Life Radio podcast network. Again, we are going to link to it. If you have not checked it out, you are, you're going to have hours upon hours of incredible interviews. And just give us a rundown about your podcast because it's brilliant. Well, the, the podcast, um, I was jokingly to you saying we have about 600,000 loyal listeners from here to Singapore. So they're not all my relatives. And um, we've had everybody from the legendary Betty White and, of course, Marty Becker um, to Jackson Galaxy to Jennifer Aniston, even Steve Wozniak from Apple. Um, let's say even the guy from uh, we've had musicians. We've had some of probably some of the people tuning into your your episode right now have been guests on my show. We've been uh, we're almost at our 300th episode. So the purpose of Old Behave is to edutain. It's to have you laugh and learn while you're on this uh, show, and it's it's one of my favorite wow. things to do. So you said six hundred thousand listeners. I mean that that number is mind mind boggling. And um, me, I, I always say if you've been in our industry for a day, you know the name Arden Moore, uh, myself included. Uh, early on, I've known you, I followed you, I've uh, consumed your stuff, and I. Uh, just a couple of months ago, as you know, I had the uh, luxury of being invited to the same place at the same time as you. Of course, I'm talking about the recent NAPS conference. Uh, I was a speaker there. You were doing your incredible, brilliant things there. And I remember um, we haven't yet met in person, but of course I was like, oh my gosh, there's Arden, there's Arden, there's Arden. <laughs> I, I was, I remember what happened. I was like talking to uh, uh, one of my friends at the uh, a vendor table and I saw you coming and I said, hang on one second. And I just sort of like popped out and I was like, oh my gosh, you're Arden Moore. And you're like, yeah. And then, and then we uh, <laughs> hit it off from there. Oh. And uh, what's, what, what's amazing is one of the announcements um, I, I want to reveal here and now that we have been alluding to is this four hour conference. October 23rd through the 26th, fifth annual happening in Las Vegas. Arden Moore is not only going to be there, but you reveal it. What are you going to be doing with us, for us, in person at our Vegas event? 
Am I pushing the broom? No. <laughs> You're pushing a broom, yes. I'm going to do an episode from the old Behave show from the conference. We're going to get the who's who of woof, woof, and meow, meow, and chirp, chirp. And they're going to be guests on a special episode of the OBH show. I mean, uh, uh, to say how 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 just magnificent that is to hear. So everybody on board watching, go to PetsittingLive.com. Register today for best pricing available. This is an event that is not to be missed, really. You're going to have such a great time from start to finish, including what Arden just said. She is going to be recording an episode of her podcast, interviewing people and, and, and speakers and vendors and attendees walking around and packaging it up as an episode of Oh Behave. In fact, if you listen to her podcast now, one of her recent episodes, which I consumed the other day, was how she did this at the NAPS conference, which was brilliant, by the way, Arden. So okay. if you want to, of course, so if you want insight into not only what the NAPS experience was and what she's going to be doing at our conference, listen to that that episode on Pet Life Radio. We're going to link to it over at facebook.com slash petsittingology. Going to have all the links. That's where we're going to keep our dialogue going. That's where we want you to like and comment so you stay in the loop. That's where we're going to give away uh, the PDFs. That's where we're going to give away two autographed copies of One a Fit Cat by Arden Moore, One a Fit Dog by Arden Moore. Hey, and look, Casey's reading the cat one right now. Oh, yeah. I think he gives it. What do you do it? I give it two paws up. <laughs> Yeah, this is great. So um, another question we received, and this is, this is such a good one. Simply put, what is the best and safest way to break up a dog fight? Okay. The first thing is, if you can, your goal is to try to see the signals before the fight occurs. So many of you know this. When two dogs have direct eye contact and that stare is not blinking and their paws are forward and their mouth is shut, if you have that opportunity to disrupt and distract those two dogs, be it at a dog park or something else, the mindset is they can't be mad and glad at the same time. So when I've walked my dogs and I see that icy stare, I do like, hey, what's going on? Or I keep treats in my pocket that I used to be an outfielder that I can throw in the opposite direction to get that dog from approaching closer. But when they do get closer, we all know putting our hands in is a great way to become an oyster shucker in New Orleans because you're going to lose some fingers. So this is Cujo. I mean, Kona. Come here, Kona. Oh, boy. Kona, come here. Come here, Kona. Kona's like, I affectionately call Kona my smart wuss. I love her. So Kona says, if I'm fighting with another dog and you are there by yourself, you put anything between that dog, those two dogs. If you've got a backpack, you throw it in. If you've got your jacket, you throw it over them. The goal is to break up that direct eye contact. That said, if you mm. can, people, you guys know the wheelbarrow. It's called the wheelbarrow pull. You come behind the dog, and when you lift up those back legs, you make sure it's at an angle up, not parallel, because you don't want them to have any good solid footing. And you can come around like this and put your hand so you're keeping that hand from getting bit, from that neck from moving. So if you're by yourself, you pick the most aggressive dog to do the wheelbarrow. You are screaming and shouting in a low commanding voice, not in a girly high pitch voice, because that will ignite the prey drive. And some dogs, I've actually broken up fights where I go, hey, sit! And they're like, oh, okay. So the goal is when you're holding a dog or something, you bring them close to your body and you're trying to break them up, but you keep that head from reaching you. Wow. Never grab okay. the collar, throw something on it. Oh, they always say the garden hose. I laugh. Where do we have garden hoses when there's dog fights? <laughs> they don't do it in the garden, right? But we have a water bottle. And you can throw the water bottle in, or you can take the cap off, and you can really squeeze it on. The goal is to disrupt and distract and break up the eye contact. I hope that helps. Wow. Hope that helps. My goodness. Like a um, 
We have we have more questions. Let's let's keep these questions going. Amy wants to know: Are harnesses safer to use on dogs than a collar is for walking? And is yeah. it true that retractable leashes can cause spinal injuries? Okay, good questions, Amy. Um, let me show you with Kona. As you can see, Kona, come here, sweetheart. Kona's a little dog. Kona's about 24 pounds. Kona has a harness on right now. I like that better because she doesn't have any kind of yanking or pulling on her throat, which we can cause a collapsed trachea. Um, it's also a battle of wills sometimes when you only use a collar attachment. So if you got a young pup, a crazy lab, or a dog that just likes to pull, 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 I highly recommend putting them in a harness while you're training them how to walk politely. Those retractable leashes, they can cause a lot of problems, and the danger is twofold. One, they snap and break. Two, you are no longer walking with your dog. You're walking behind your dog. When we walk with our dogs outside, that should be a bonding opportunity. We live with our cell phones. We're coulda, woulda, shoulda. We're always instant messaging. I say when you're on a walk with your dog, this is your golden moment to live in the now, the bow now, and when you don't. So with the dogs with the, those zip lines, this happened actually in New York City. I was with a friend and I saw another lady walk with a little chihuahua on a long zip line the dog turned the corner before the lady did, and another dog had already attacked and killed that chihuahua before the woman even knew it. Those long leads don't give them freedom. Mm. They put them in peril. Wow. And speaking of, thank you, Sarah, for pointing this out. Uh, one of our current sponsors and longtime friend of mine, um, is Harness Lead, H-A-R-N-E-S-S-L-E-A-D, HarnessLead.com. Not only are they a sponsor, not only does every single attendee, spoil alert, get <laughs> a Harness Lead in their swag bag, yes, indeed, this year, but also it's a great product. We hear over and over again that it works. She actually had a stint on QVC recently. We're nice. big fans. Yeah, exactly. We're big fans of the Harness Lead. Uh, thank yeah, you again, actually, Sarah. Uh, Casey in class, till he gets to know everybody, wears a harness. And he walks on a lead. And I don't want to hurt his neck, so he's on a harness. I love that. That's a great... Swag, it's a wag, is it swag wag? What is it? I don't know. <laughs> swag bag, I don't know. I think that's what the industry the calls it, a swag. swag bag. It's the thing you receive, uh, it's the thing you receive just for walking through the door that's in great. Vegas. That's very nice, that's very nice. So now uh, another question, if you do not mind, uh, Kelly wants to know, what is the best way to help an injured animal that's been hit by a car? Yeah. What process do we take and to, to, uh, to foresee that unfortunate event, what should we also have in our car at that time? Good, good question, Kelly. Um, the most important thing is that you have to do what we call a quick um, injury assessment. So if you see, like, let's pretend Casey just got hit by a car and, there, and, her, and his pet parent was there. I would give that pet parent something to do so I could assess that, that, the cat quickly. I would say, could you please go to your car? Do you have um, a coat or do you have a towel? Can you call your veterinarian right now and tell them exactly how far away we are and that your cat just got hit by a car? I'm doing that intentionally to keep that person busy while I can assess the cat. So when we are assessing a cat or a dog that's been injured, the thing I'm trying to look for is do I see the chest rising and falling? If I don't, that means that that dog or cat is not breathing, that they may have a heart stoppage. Um, I'm also looking for any signs of blood. Now, a cat and a dog, they have the femoral artery here, here, brachial artery here, here, and a caudal artery here. If there is squirting blood, we teach in my pet first aid class exactly how to put pressure on the right place to slow down the bleeding. And we are looking at all the vital signs. So within 45 seconds, I would be able to do an assessment. And you guys know, 
It's a triage situation. If there is no chest rising and falling, if you don't feel a warm breath of air and you don't have a pulse, you're going to have to do CPR, rescue breathing. The third level is, is bleeding. So if they don't have a heartbeat, if they're not breathing or they're, and they're bleeding like a, a volcano, those are your three most critical things because a dog or a cat can bleed out within five to seven minutes. So in our class, we show you exactly how to stop the bleeding. Wow. Um, and Casey, thank you. For, <laughs> Casey's like, oh, okay. yeah. I like this part. I get to nap. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Arden, for your incredible insight. Uh, we have a few more questions here. Um, and, and by the way, the fact that we're getting to see this on a cat, on a dog, in your space is just, it, it really does make all the difference. I love it. It is. I think you, we, what we do is we build um, m muscle memory. So you take a class with us and you get to get your confidence built on tolerant dogs and cats who know that strangers are going to poke and prod them in class. And then when you get home, you have more confidence to practice some of the skills we teach you on your own pet. And you know what? You're going to end up bonding even closer with your pet. So I love that yeah. part. And and I, I do have to remind everybody that if you watching want to lead a class and host a class with and in cooperation yeah. with in your town with Arden, um, get in touch with her, petfirstaidforyou.com slash schedule has all the information. I think that's a huge win. You get to yeah, put Casey on. Casey wants to be in every yeah. state in the continental US. Come on, folks. Bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> One other question. Uh, Gina asks, uh, she's in Florida, so 90% okay. of her fuzzy clients have allergies. Oh, yeah. What can she do to keep them comfortable? Yeah, that's the, the itch is really, an, uh, I just wrote a whole article on that in uh, Dogster Magazine. It's going to come out in the next issue. The skin conditions. First of all, you got to be a pet detective. Is that allergy being caused by food allergies? Or is your dog or cat, unfortunately, and I used to live in Florida, Gina, uh, sensitive to bee or wasp stings and things like that. So if it's a food allergy, obviously you're working closely with your veterinarian to give them a protein, novel protein that won't cause a flare up. But when you're walking with your cat or dog and they get stung by a bee and you're far from home, let's say the most prone spots a cat or dog is gonna get stung is on their face, their paws, and on their butt end when they're running away from the hive. So if you can see the stinger, everybody, can you read my credit card number quickly? No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> if you see the stinger, you can scrape it out. Never, ever use tweezers to try to remove a stinger because that toxin sac can burst and all you've done is spread more toxins to the body. You can also take your cool water bottle and pl and put a like your put a cloth, a wet cloth, a cool cloth on the side of the sting to try to keep it cool till you get home. You have to monitor the breathing because if they get stung by the face and they're having trouble breathing, we show you in class how to do mouth to snout on a dog and a cat. And finally, when you do get home, every I think you should have this in your car right now, especially those folks in Florida, places with bugs. Get some antihistamine, put a safety pin taped to it, and use the gel form of the antihistamine so that you can squeeze in that precious antihistamine into their mouth to help the swelling. Please, guys, it's a big word. The only ingredient should be diphenhydramine. That's it. Never use children's antihistamine. Don't use cherry flavor. Don't use anything with acetaminophen. One ingredient is safe for dogs and cats, and that's diphenhydramine. Wow. Go ahead. Um, uh, Amy asked uh, to repeat your website. It is Pet First Aid for You. That's the number four, the letter U dot com. Uh, if you go over to Facebook.com slash Pet Sittingology, which is in fact our official Facebook fan page, you'll see a recap of 
all of these links. You'll see two PDF downloads uh, recapping from all of this directly from Arden. And of course, that's where we'd love for you to like, comment, and share so we can keep you in the loop and award an autographed copy of Fit Cat by Arden Moore and an autographed copy of Fit Dog by Arden Moore. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to channel my Vanna White. What do you think? <laughs> I... I love it. And if you register for our fifth annual conference at PetsittingLive.com in the next 24 hours from this live broadcast, you will be in the running for a whole host of other gifts that in mid-June we will be announcing live on a broadcast just like this. So look out for that. Before we wrap it up, um, I love that you said you wrote for Dogster Magazine because I know your credits are so vast. You literally know everybody in the industry and our theme of this this year's conference is in fact connection. And the more I talk to you, Arden, I know that you know everybody who's gonna be there. You know three people removed. It's we wonderful. Live, are we lucky to be in an industry, folks, that we're in, the pet industry? I used to be an investigative reporter, so I was putting bad people away a lot. And I feel like I'm bringing out the best in pets and their people in the roles that I do play. But I learn something every day from many of you, and hopefully I'm teaching you something every day you know, learning and sharing to me is the best way to have a great life. Right, Casey? Come on, Casey. Absolutely. A couple more questions if you have time. Pam wants to know, do you offer training to become an instructor for you? We're working on that because the first thing we did now that I have my own company is going around and doing in-service training to different uh, pet professional companies and groups. Uh, 2017 is when we'll be ready and uh, be very selective in having instructors. We've got to have people that are as passionate about this, who want to stay current. And like I say, I work with a great team of ER uh, internists and Dr. Marty Becker on my program. I spend one Saturday night every two months in the ER clinic in Plano County in Texas with Dr. Mike Lasasso. I am learning amazing amounts of things seeing things firsthand, leptospirosis, you know, little dogs getting bit. I mean, you name it. I am learning. I want those kinds of folks with that mindset to be on my team. People who are not happy with just that they know everything. We're always learning. Mm -hmm. uh, Lori asked the question. She writes, hi, Arden. Thanks for the great webinar. Please <laughs> clarify safe hydration in the heat and avoiding bloat between providing yeah. lots of water but avoiding the gulp. Yeah, that's a really tough one, especially for the barrel-chested dogs, you know, like uh, uh, some of the boxers and pit bulls and German shepherds and all. In fact, the great, great Marley of Marley and Me died of bloat. I knew the mm. real Marley. I worked with John. We were newspaper reporters together. Really? It's slowing wow. down the water intake. It's slowing down the food intake. Because when a dog or, uh, drinks really fast or eats really fast, um, they can cause bloat. And uh, according to Dr. Michael Sasso, the ER vet, he said that's one of the, um, that's like the mother of all emergencies that come into his clinic. Um, so you can do things like you could put a food bowl where you can put a big stone in it so they eat around it. If you have a metal bowl, flip it over, put the kibble inside that little rim Make them take a little bit more time to eat, um, but really make sure they're not eating and drinking quickly, especially those barrel-chested dogs because they can get bloat. Wow. I um, I can't get enough of this kind of dialogue. Um, <laughs> That's why my last name's Moore. <laughs> oh. <wow. laughs> Jackie asks for clarification. Which Benadryl is safe again? Is it the one with diphenhydramine? Yeah, good for you. Um, I, you know, you know how long it took me to say this word, folks? Yeah. Diphenhydramine with a D as in dandy. That is the only ingredient you want to get. Ideally, if you can get it in a gel form, that's the best because you can pop it with your safety pin and put it in that little pocket that all dogs, cats have on the side of their mouth. Because if that dog got a puffed up face, trying to put a pill down them is going to be a little challenging. So um, that's the only ingredient. Please don't ask me to spell it. But it is in my course book. Um, we have it. It's a, and the other thing, I learn from others. So everybody who takes my class gets a full color course book. And every time we learn something new from our experts that we have to update, we send you a PDF 
that you can add to your course book so you never have to buy another course book. Mm. It always will stay current. Wow. L thank you. Lori writes simply, love this woman with about five <laughs> exclamation points. Is that my mom? No. <laughs> Is that my sister? No. <laughs> I, I do too. And I can't be more excited to have her in our mix. Facebook.com slash PetSittingology is our fan page. Do go over, like, comment, and share that just so you'll stay in the loop when we keep that dialogue going. We'll bring Arden over for uh, additional Q&A should it exist. Also, if you are in our private Facebook group for Pet Sittingology clients, um, Arden herself has recently been invited and brought in as well. So she is lurking there too. So feel free to give some feedback and say hello to her. Again, she will be at our conference in person, not only doing the good work she does, but with a microphone recording an episode of the OBHAVE podcast featuring you, featuring you, the attendees, the speakers, the people behind everything that's going on and go over to her OBHAVE podcast on Pet Life Radio. Uh, the links are all around here and you can hear not only all of her shows, but her recent one about the NAPS conference where we had the good fortune of crossing paths. So yeah. if there's nothing else, but go ahead, say something. I was just going to say, hey, folks, anybody that belongs to PSI, because I, I like that organization as well. Um, Everybody does. I'm a fan you, of PSI. Go ahead. Sorry. Yep. The Pet First Aid for You program has been the one selected to teach attendees in a special workshop, Pet First Aid. And we're probably going to have at least two dogs and a cat. And uh, assisting me will be my uh, master instructor, uh, Rob Nager. A lot of you guys know him. So you're going to get an opportunity in San Diego in September. If you're attending the conference, please sign up for that workshop and you can learn. Kona will be there, Casey, and maybe a couple dogs more. That's amazing. So again, Arden is going to be at the PSI conference in September in San Diego. So check that out and get more information. Any final thoughts or words before we do wrap it up? I know time is of the essence here, but we were going to get to a bunch of money saving tips. Yeah. There is the PDF, so you don't right. have to worry. You're going to get the entire PDF. Do you want to throw us a bone? Do you want to throw us yeah. one? All right. You can make, everybody goes to the bathroom. You can make a treat ball out of a toilet paper roll or a paper towel roll for your dog or cat. You cut holes in it. You put the treats in, you fold the ends, and voila, the cat and dog have a free treat ball. Amazing. Um, Lori asks, what is your best email address for people to contact you? It's Joshua Carey at, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and my phone number, no. Uh, it's Arden at four, F-O-U-R, legged, L-E-G-G-E-D, life. Arden at fourleggedlife.com or pet first aid for you at gmail.com. Good enough. And we will link all to that so you can find her any which way you please. Uh, Amy wants to know will you be at Super Zoo by any chance? No, unfortunately, I've got some other prior commitments. Um, I do travel a lot. I just came back from a four state tour where we were in Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and California. So um, I love Super Zoo. Uh, maybe next time, but um, I would love to connect even if I can't make it there. Absolutely wonderful. Well, there you have it, guys. Thank you for attending live. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Facebook.com slash PetSittingology for all the recap ongoing dialogue petsittinglive.com to join us live in Las Vegas. Arden, an absolute pleasure. I know that this is just the beginning of our beautiful journey together. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, uh, Casey, who's preoccupied with eating treats, and a cute Kona, who proves that shelter dogs do want to have great jobs. Also, thank you, Josh, for hosting this great uh, uh, hangout. You are brilliant and spectacular. I can't wait to see what the future holds for you and us and everybody on board. Thank you guys. Enjoy the rest of the day. We'll be in touch. Have a great pause one. Up, pause up. <laughs> Bye.